feminine charm is synonymous with Christian Dior, but up until now it's been more present in the clothes than the label's designers. After Mr. Dior himself, Yves Saint Laurent took the helm, followed by Marc Boan, Gianfranco Ferré, John Galliano and Rafe Simons. Now Maria Grazia Curie is the first woman to direct the French Couture House in its 70-year history. She took time out to sit down for a chat amid the flurry of activity at the label's workshop. Maria Grazia, thank you so much for joining us on France 24. You've just presented the fall winter collection of Haute Couture for Dior, a very important moment in the fashion calendar. What was going through your mind during the design process? Uh, this collection is very important for me because uh, it's also our anniversary. And so I decided to start with this collection with an homage to Mr. Dior, because in any case he was our founder. And I think in this specific uh, Haute Couture, uh, I worked a lot with uh, the code Dior. Dior has such an incredible legacy of celebrating strong femininity. This idea of a strong woman, she's made it feminine, but masculine too. It's a mix of masculine and feminine, of everything. And I love the embroidery on the coats as well. You've spent about a year now as the head of this very prestigious brand. How has it been? Any highlights, any surprises? I found this book in uh, Dior Archive that Mr. Dior did in '54, and this book surprised me because uh, immediately uh, show like Dior was uh, a worldwide brand. He opened an atelier also in uh, New York, uh, also in the other country. He understood immediately the difference of women around the world. And uh, surprised me also to know that uh, immediately he started with different category of product like parfum, scarves, fur. And that's unbelievable for the time, because we are speaking after about a few years after the war. Christian Dior was among the first brands to encompass every facet of fashion. Today, the label has hung on to some traditions, employing milliner Stephen Jones to oversee couture hats, headdresses and masks. He's become an integral part of the design team. I think hats have always been part of the language of Dior anyway, but I think you know, for me, uh, hats are the punctuation mark to the sentence of fashion. I mean, we really provide the exclamation marks more than anything. The first season I worked with Maria Grazia, normally we have a, a girl like we have here trying the hats on, and Maria Grazia was the first person who said, excuse me, do you, is it okay if I try it on myself? And she put it on and she looked fantastic. She said, it's in the show. <laughs> a successful career in your native Italy at Fendi Valentino. How has it been adapting to a French workplace, a Parisian professional life? Oh, I think there is many things uh, that uh, are not so different between French and Italy. We have a huge uh, culture about fashion, but probably in different way. I think that uh, French uh, are very close with the past, with the heritage, and they want to maintain this life. Italian are very, um, a point of view more about uh, now and the future, are, more, are not so obsessed with the heritage. Uh, probably sometimes uh, they forgot to celebrate uh, our heritage, because in any case I'm Italian. Mm, but that's helped them to be very fresh, uh, very... I want to make a mix. I want to maintain this idea of heritage because I think really that is important because it's part of our history and so... But at the same time, I want to move uh, in the world <laughs> in an Italian way and uh, with uh, this idea about the future. Dior's taking a look back at its rich history with a special anniversary exhibition at the Museum of Decorative Arts in Paris. 
With over 300 haute couture creations on display, it's also a peek behind the scenes at the work of the petite main, the expert craftsmen and women dealing with feathers, crystal, embroidery and tulle, confections that can take more than a thousand hours to complete. When you look at that, what do you see that Dior's contribution to fashion has been in seven decades? When you see the exhibition, you don't see only dress. You see like uh, the dress uh, express the time. Uh, when I arrive in Dior, at my first the pret a porter the first things that I say that I believe that our heritage is not only Mr. Dior, but all the huge designer and talent designer that work in Dior. And how have you seen that style evolve over the ages? If you see Mr. Dior, uh, for example, Dior is evident that it's after the war, the color are gray, black, uh, uh, ivory and blue. Only in evening dress you have a touch of color. People image Dior, remember about Dior more, Miss Dior dress with a little flower. But honestly, the, the, the important part of Dior was that they wear uh, jacket, coat, uh, in um, wool material, because we are speaking about after the war. So the silhouette is feminine because we have a small waist and the pleats gone. But at the same time, it's also severe. Only in the evening dress you find this touch of fairy tale. Um, if you see after Saint Laurent, you see that the women are changing and the, the silhouette start to be more light because the, the time is changing. And if you pass after uh, to see Marc Boan, it's so evident like the women are changing a lot, the short dresses, and also like that we are moving in some way in pret a porter Now there is a huge audience, start to have a huge audience fashion with the Ferré. And with Galliano, that's more and more evident because it's a really scenographic, really theatral. The image also of couture is like an opera, more than only a défilé. And also with the RAF, uh, you immediately see that there's another moment in the world. There's a more intellectual, more... So I think they was very clever to, to choose the right designer for, uh, that rap could be represent well the time. And the brand's heritage has clearly inspired Dior's creative director, who's woven it into her own designs. This dress was designed by Maria Grazia Curie, and it's called New Junon, and in fact it references the dress directly behind it. That model was created by Christian Dior in 1949 for his mid-century collection. It's called the Junon, and it's a very famous piece in the history of fashion. We can see in the modern version that Maria Grazia's also used tulle, but in her own way. That is, it's very light, with the shaded pastel tones and the pleated edge that makes the gown float about the body. She really does think like a woman who'd be wearing her own designs. Each piece must feel pleasant to wear, sit lightly on the body, while at the same time creating a beautiful silhouette. Historically, we do associate Dior with a certain idea of femininity, the new look, evening wear, that sort of thing. But in 2017, what for you defines femininity or who defines femininity for you? Because I'm a woman, I have a completely different point of view uh, about femininity. Uh, to speak about femininity for me is not to speak about an outfit, it's more to speak about women, the relationship with their body. Uh, we give our, po our point of view because we are designer, but in any case, uh, the women can choose the piece and can select and uh, fit and uh, mix uh, in a personal way. Uh, um, before, fashion was more in a vision more imposed a point of view. I think now is absolutely not possible. Uh, the women are different, uh, the values are completely different. Uh, uh, so it is, is another story. <laughs> now uh, I think it's important to remember that we are all different. <laughs> 
Maria Grazia caused a stir when she sent models down the runway in T-shirts proclaiming we should all be feminists. Inspired by Nigerian writer Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, a bold entrance at Dior for the designer's first ready-to-wear collection. Maria Grazia, you're the first woman to be the creative director at Dior. Why do you think there are so few women in these top positions in the industry? <laughs> Because it's difficult for women to arrive uh, in a high position. It's not so easy. It's in tradition, but not only in fashion, in all, uh, uh, all around the world. And we are lucky in any case. There are other places more difficult too. Uh, it's difficult. A catwalk show is a lot of work, a lot of preparation, stress. Do you manage to let go at the end and enjoy the experience? How do you celebrate at the end of a collection? No, I, uh, I don't want uh, to be stressed. <laughs> I, I really like uh, to enjoy each moment because in any case, uh, for a designer, it's more important uh, to do the collection the day before because the final moment, everything is done. Uh, what I really like uh, is before. When you think about, when you are building that, when you uh, go in the atelier, that's the part that I love more, honestly. After is a beautiful moment, a celebration moment, uh, um, but what I really like is uh, to work in the collection, honestly. Maria Grazia, thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you, thank you.